Ladies and gentlemen, for some reason today, I have that feeling I get when you go down to the Vietnam Memorial in BC and stand in front of the wall and hear and, and just look at the simple listing of the names. Nothing dramatic, no angels, no trumpets or harps or anything. Just the data. Our president, number 45, just made a deal with the devil in North Korea, whether he actually obtained a fiddle made of gold or not to take home, I don't know. But apparently he got persuaded Chairman Kim Jong-un, we hope, to give up all of his nuclear weapons, all of his missile engines, and every remains, every fallen soldier who died over there and never got to come home. 6,000 Americans, more than twice the number of people who died on 9-11, gave their lives over there and uh, with no hope of even returning, with no hope of even a grave. In fact, he even said, uh, Kim Jong-un gave that up quickly. Yeah. Stranger things have happened. Nixon went to China. Look what, you know, Reagan got Gorbachev to do, to tear down the Berlin Wall. Miracle. The communist system murdered a hundred million innocent men, women, and children, and dominated a third of all of the acreage on earth at its height. Far worse than anything Hitler ever did. He detonated the Tsar bomb, largest nuke ever made. Totally unnecessary. He even uh, tried to launch cosmonauts into space and didn't admit it when they died, and lied to their own families. That's what they do. And our president, somehow or other, now, you know, it depends on what Kim Jong un does, it depends on you know, how things work, at least seems to think that uh, war's over. 6,000 people. It's that number in my mind. That's why I'm not driving home now. I'm too distracted in a way. Of course, I'm looking at CNN or whatever. They're doing whatever they can to sabotage that because they want war. They want, you know, to destroy the country rather than see us get rid of globalism. You have idiot, damn Canadian, another pinko, commie, ideology not too different from Kim Jong-un, just a little bit less of an extremist, you know, trying to humiliate Trump before he goes over there because... You know, the globalists, they like a one-world government. They figure, you know, they can bring North Korea in later. <sighs> Trump isn't putting up with it. Sad thing is, with Chairman, after his latest nuclear test, apparently the, you know, he blew up an entire mountain and inflicted casualties on uh, both, uh, probably both China and Russia as a, as a result and inflicted mechanical and, and, you know, geological damage on other countries, and I think that's part of it. The two of them probably said, like, this guy's, you know, we're, we're, tight, we're, we're sick of it. Hopefully. 
Now, they brought three Americans back recently. Yeah. All except for one was in good health. Now he's going to bring back 6,000. And there's 35,000 other soldiers on that, on that border. Come home, hopefully, put them on the Mexican border, protect Americans. That would be nice. You know, I feel, I remember being a kid and listening to, and I always liked to listen to Ronald Reagan because he was like a preacher man. Most of his speeches, I mean, basically, were, were sermons with a little bit of politics, you know, would crop up once in a while. Listen to him. He said, you know, he sounds like, uh, listen to his speeches. Sounds like the son of a preacher man. And I always like listening to that. Remember him telling Mr. Gorbachev to open these gates, tear down these gates, tear down this wall. And Gorbachev, who's a ruthless murderer, communist, tortured people, part of that system, clawed his way up to the top, probably killed dozens of his rivals to get to where he was, went up, did okay to hell with it, and did it. Hopefully, Chairman Kim decides he wants to be the next Gorbachev. Hopefully, we have some good news for once. There's always all this bad news everywhere. Yeah. Economy's growing. People are going back to work. I recently went down south to see the eclipse. And, you know, as is the case, I would periodically pull over my car because it's only got a little 11 gallon gas tank. Because, you know, the all wheel drive unit occupies the area where some of the area where a gas tank could go. They pull over. And strangely enough, there was one occupation wasn't present. Not a single prostitute accosted me at those gas stations. Because they all went back to work. Because Donald Trump got the damn EPA, the eco-terrorist, to quit wrecking our factories. Everybody was back to work. I went in, I was in a conversation with somebody there waiting in line for gas and I was talking to him, you know, we just got one of these 15 minute kind of conversations that you have when you go down south and, you know, you're, you're eating the food and you said, well, you know, I'll come in and I'll sit down and I'll, you know, I'll just eat the pizza inside the, the, the gas station instead of the car because they said, you know, there was a seat available. They had a lawn chair and said, hey, so go ahead. And the man offered me a damn job in a, <laughs> in a freaking paper mill. Said he wasn't sure if they could help me relocate if I wanted. I mean, holy shit. Everybody's working. In South Carolina, all the cars have these temporary tags that you get when you, you know, be, when your license plate comes in through the mail. And I noticed being kind of a number freak that damn near every one of those tags was expired. Why? So many people down there are buying new cars that they don't have the manufacturing capacity to manufacture enough license plates to put on those cars so they have waivers so you can keep your temporary tag for six months or a year until you finally get the damn license plate. Because everybody's going back to work. <laughs> you still want that Pizzagate, eyes wide shut, butcher, does anybody really want that individual psychopath in the White House? Somebody who, in the last debate, Chris Wallace is there. <laughs> On Fox News divulges that it takes four minutes to give the order between to launch a nuclear weapon from the president to the time of the launch. That bit of information was one of the most closely guarded special access secrets in the United States military. How, the, how quickness, the quickness of that was something 
that trillions of dollars was spent to protect. And that goddamn Hildebeest, the Secretary of Defense, just blurts it out in the middle of a presidential debate. <laughs> you, you, you want to elect this idiot? How, how, how many people around this person has turned up dead? How, how, many, how many was that? I don't know. Who'd you kill today? Hey, Hillary, Hillary. How many people did you kill today? Yeah. How many planes? I don't know. Nobody does. Don't know why Sessions ain't doing anything. Maybe they got dirt on him. Maybe he has to go. It's so good to see the good guys win in the end. Because the thing about it, being a good guy is just too many things suck too long in a row. And it never seems to end. Well, sun's shining. Maybe the bad times are going to end. God bless America. Keep America, make America great again and the good times roll.